In three weeks, I'm traveling to the UK. I'll be taking my wife, my kids, and 75 of you people who signed up for our UK trip. I'm looking forward to the historic sites, the cultural sites, and I've had this trip on the books for some time now. But then I saw this clip, and I'm wondering what misadventures may await. We will throw the false force of the law at people. And whether you're in this country committing crimes on the streets, or committing crimes from further afield online, we will come after you. As someone who speaks plain truth that some find offensive, I've got to wonder, will I be free to enjoy the UK or are my past social media postings to be found to be thought and speech crimes that, as this guy said, must be punished with the full weight of the law? The officer lumped hate speech and violence into the same category. Now, violent crimes illegal. Everybody knows that and it should be is speech in the same category. While I certainly understand someone seriously threatening to like bomb an airport or something, and they do that on, on social media, I get that police should look into that. Absolutely. But what if the slippery slope into the other type of postings that are far more benign, but still the same people have been arrested for in the UK, people are getting arrested for all kinds of hate crimes, speech crimes. And on that note, what exactly is hate speech anyway? Now, to this question, lawmakers can't really give any type of consistent answer. You're not allowed to say anything that the LGBTQ plus whatever movement doesn't like, because that's hate speech. You can't say anything about black people. That, again, hate speech. But if you guys will notice, the rules on hate speech, it's not applied uniformly. To the population of London, which is now over 40% Muslim, hate speech is, of course, not applied to any of the teachings of the Quran, for instance. For those of you who haven't read any of the Quran, I have. It does seem to call for violence, which is admitted by Muslim followers who don't interpret such verses as metaphorical, because some Muslims do. Others take it very, very, uh, very literally. What of that? What of that of hate speech? But still crickets from the UK. So it becomes quite obvious that the UK and other governments are gravitating into this policing vein where they can just arbitrarily decide what types of hate speech are okay. For instance, you can hate white people. That's okay. You can speak against them. No problem. You can hate Jews. You can hate rich men, or you can even just hate men in general. No problems there. You can hate a pro-life person because they were hatefully telling you not to Spring. You can hate a homophobe. You can hate a racist. Okay to hate these people and say whatever you want to them. So it all amounts to this. With governments gone woke, you're allowed to hate what they hate, but nothing else. If you're the one making the hate speech policies or you're one of the masses that happen to agree with their exact narrative, then you're free to hate who they hate. No other hate's permitted, of course, and they get to police what is hate and who's guilty of it. Then you're free to ruin those that you've targeted, their families. It's okay to jail them, to defame them. And in fact, they may encourage you to do just that. You can hate them because they've been hateful in their thoughts and their speech. Imagine that. It's so ironic. Uh, you know, you hate the hateful, and our hate is justified because you hated first. Now, I'm an American, and in America, hate speech is protected speech. It's under the First Amendment. You may not like that, but hate speech is protected speech. It is legal to hate someone. It's legal to have hateful thoughts in your head. It's legal to petition your government with a list of wrongs. You can also do that. It's lawful to speak out against corrupt leaders, and you're free to read the Quran and the Talmud and the Bible, and you're free to say all religions complete fantasy, and everyone that believes in any of this stuff is just an absolute loony tune. You can say whatever you want. You can say those ideas. Now, that's speech. That's thought. Now, where it gets illegal is when you actually decide I think my neighbor is an infidel, and I'm going to go beat him up and burn his house to the ground. You can't do that. The problem lies in when we uh, start policing speech as violence. Speech isn't violence, and violence isn't speech. Yet here we are in 2024, with many people crying out that certain speech should be illegal, 
and they aspire to give the government, this is terrible, they aspire to give the government the power to police speech, and with it, and by logical consequence and extension, the outlawing of certain ideas. Speech and ideas are linked together. This is just classic Orwellian thought policing. On that note, I wanted to read, uh, and Ben, I'd love for you to weigh in here, uh, some of the Orwellian quotes. Some are from like 1984, and some are just Orwell quotes. Yeah. Orwell, okay. he was British, wasn't he? I believe, yeah. yeah. This is apropos. So to, to what I just said, if thought corrupts language, language can also corrupt thought. And so th there becomes this entire propaganda campaign about really what words you can't say. What can you not say? And if, if there's mm -hmm. anything that you can't say, whether it's actually mandated by a government or whether it's just something that's sociologically uh, frowned upon such an extent that you're going to get tarred and feather. If you say that idea, it was OK to say that a few years ago. You could say men can't women. And 10 years ago, everyone would have been like, yeah, of, of course, if you had suggested men. You would have been laughed, you know, out of any type of public discourse anywhere. And now, frankly, you could be arrested in the UK for expressing those sentiments too hard. Now, interestingly enough, Ben, I don't know if you're tracking this or not. In the UK, they have something called non-crime hate speech. So you could uh, go on social media, say what I just said, men can't yeah. because men can't. Women. And government officials may target you and speak to you and report that, hey, a non-crime hate speech incident has occurred. Now, even though it's not technically a crime, it can still carry some of the consequences as if it were a crime. So you're like, oh, we're not going to call it a crime, but we're going to put sociological pressure on you and even legal pressure on you. You know, that sounds like China's social credit system. It's just all just socialism denigrating into a totalitarian, authoritarian communism. That's what it, where it always goes uh, to wrangle the masses and control speech, which controls ideas, which allows people to be very, very easy to control. Just before we started filming, you told me there was some breaking news regarding Elon Musk in that vein in, in particular. Trump and Elon Musk are about to go on, live what? on X and do their debate. So that hasn't happened at the time of recording this. Now, in preparation for that, the European Commission writes a letter to Musk, and for me, it looks just like blatant, brazen election interference. And it looks like a huge threat to Elon Musk specifically and X. So here it is. Let's read some of it. Dear Mr. Musk, I'm writing to you in the context of recent events in the United Kingdom and relation to the planned broadcast on your platform X of a live conversation between a U.S. presidential candidate and yourself, which will also be accessible to users in the EU. I understand you're currently doing a stress test of the platform. In this context, I'm compelled to remind you of the due diligence obligation set up in the Digital Services Act, as outlined in my previous letter. As the individual entirely ultimately controlling a platform of over 300 million users worldwide, of which one-third is in the EU, that has been designated a very large online platform, their language. You have the legal obligation to ensure X's compliance with EU law, and in particular, the DSA and in, uh, in the EU. Then they start going into what actions Elon Musk must be constrained by in his interview with Trump. Oh, clearly they wild? Don't, yeah, clearly they do not want this to happen. Oh, is that The biggest wild? platform with the two rogue billionaires, because at this point in the stage, it's like all the globalists and billionaires yeah. versus the two billionaires, Musk and Trump. It's like two against all the rest of them in a jockeying for actual freedom versus a global uh, Orwellian tyranny. You know, it's interesting because Elon Musk, a couple days ago, he posted some statistics internally showing that X is one of the uh, most popular, if not the most popular, social media platform in a lot of these European countries. Right. And I wonder if it has to do with the, the freedom to express. Yeah, well, they can't control X like they do with all the other yeah. social media uh, platforms. There's massive amounts of control. I think X still has some... Uh, three-letter agency control and all kinds of manipulations happening there. And so it's certainly not perfect, but it still looks to be truly the public square of the world where ideas can be mm -hmm. uh, interchanged uh, in the most free sense. And to that, global tyrants and thought police, they can't have that. So here, here it goes on with the threat. So this notably means ensuring on one hand that the freedom of expression and information, including media freedom and pluralism, are effectively protected. So they're, they're giving a nod to, yeah, you're supposed to have freedom of speech and stuff, but also, here it is, 
All proportion and effective mitigation measures are put in place. You must make sure that you're putting in effective measures to make sure everything plays nice. Regarding the amplification of harmful content in connection with relevant events, including live streaming, which if unaddressed might increase the risk profile of X and generate, here it is, detrimental effects on civil discourse. We can't have you just having a conversation with Trump. Musk, you can't just have a natural conversation with Musk because it might produce detrimental effects on civil civic discourse and public security. Which they, in turn would affect the voting patterns that's of right. the people Absolutely. you rule. This, and so they, they want to impose restrictions so that y'all don't just have this free conversation. They go on, this is important because the background of recent events of public unrest brought about by the amplification of content that promotes hatred, disorder, incitement to violence, or certain instances of disinformation. They're saying you're not controlling free speech like we want you to control free speech. And anything bad that happens in the EU is your fault because you are not controlling free speech. So if we have riots and violence, it's not because of the UK's disastrous immigration policy or lack thereof, where they essentially have erased their border like us and now are, uh, are suffering dire consequences. People are rioting because of that. But they'll say, no, the riots are because they have too much free speech on your platform. Now, skipping a few paragraphs, uh, there, there's kind of, here's some more teeth that the EU puts in it. Let me clarify that any negative effect of illegal content on X, and by illegal content, they mean free speech that we don't like, hate speech. It could be attributed to the ineffectiveness of the way in which X applies the relevant provisions of the DSA. It may be relevant in the context of the ongoing proceedings of the overall assessment of X's compliance with the EU law. Basically, it's, hey, we might outlaw X if you don't put on uh, restrictions and if you don't start censoring the way we want you to. That's what it is. How Orwellian. Or Orwell would look at this and be like, big brother. There it is. So gov.uk on X put, think before you post. Content that incites violence or hatred isn't just harmful, it can be illegal. Inciting violence, that, that's tough of like, inciting violence, you know? Well, you, you, could, you could make a case for almost anything. Any idea that someone doesn't like yeah. could be an inciting of violence. But look at this, hatred isn't harmful, it can be illegal. Hate can be illegal. See, hate is something that happens between your ears. You could look at someone and have hateful thoughts. That's illegal. You're not allowed to hate. You know, like, no, you're, you're allowed to hate. Now, hate can be ridiculous and terrible, and I'm of the camp of like, no, I, I believe we should be loving. Uh, I, I believe that we should even go as far to love our enemies. That, that's my belief. So I find racism or bigotry or hatred uh, all very bad. Uh, it's repugnant to me. However, you still have a legal right to do it because the uh, alternate... Uh, the alternate idea here is the government now has the ability to police your thoughts, your speech, and that is way worse than allowing people to independently hate. You can't erase hatred by making it illegal. All you can do is give tyrants the power to control everything about you, including what you say. It is the literal last stand of freedom. I'll see it right now. If you were a British man, you would be in jail. Likely so. Um, and, and if, if not today, I've like, I, I can't imagine the world trending the way it is where I don't end up, uh, uh martyred or in prison. Th that looks like the trend line. I'm like, I can't escape it. I'm really trying to just enjoy my family and life and, uh, everything I can now. Cause I don't know what my future is, but I will, I will be a free man espousing freedom, uh, until that option's taken away from me. Back to this post. So gov.uk had put this, your online actions have consequences. Then there's this guy on X called Greg and uh, a funny looking avatar. This guy's got a huge following and he goes around ratioing people, meaning he takes unpopular posts and he says something just very, the most sane thing you can. Just, just uh, usually like a one-liner with PETA yeah. 
for PETA, uh, um, for instance, they're saying, hey, fish aren't your food. You shouldn't eat fish. And then Greg responded something like, uh, how come fish can eat fish, but we can't eat fish? <laughs> I love Greg. I love this guy already then, now. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> See, but that's the thing. Who gets to decide between what's hilarious and what's harmful? I want, big brother will let us know. See, big, if, big brother will let us know. Well, anyway, Greg, the, the next part just said PETA blocked Greg. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's Greg, and he uh, gets in the comments here, and he says, I was going to try to ratio you, but I decided not to because it might be illegal, and I don't want to get in trouble. And then you look at the ratio. You see how many people liked gov.uk? It was 4,000. And how many liked Greg's? And it was 65,000. <laughs> it's brutal. And so you see these tyrannical governments are wildly unpopular. Uh, Orwell had another quote. Maybe, maybe I'd have written down. I, I, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. I, I didn't copy this one down. But he basically says T, uh, tyrants must gain control through uh, fraud and force. And once they're find out, they must rely on force altogether. We're mm -hmm. we're nearing that force stage because mm -hmm. the fraud is so. Yeah dramatically obvious here in the United States where everything is manufactured. It's all fake. Um, and, and so now it's kind of like they're out in the open, but what are you going to do about it? Here's more Orwell on thought control. The revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. What do you think Big Brother means by that, Ben? It means the total control of the portals by which to understand what language means. It means the rewriting, as we've seen in, in That's good. Wikipedia. Yeah. You know, the erasing of facts. That's it. It's perfect political speech. And I, I hate it because I, I, it just, I to, to know that we are seeing that, viewers are seeing that in the last couple of years actually happen. That's right. It's just wild. What is political correctness but a muzzle? so that you can reorient what is acceptable to say, what ideas yeah. are okay. You can't say that, but it's a muzzle uh, so that you can't just speak a truth plainly. You can't just say what you think. Shall anymore. not truth have salt, you yeah. know, as a part of its its delivery, or, or sh you know, should it be now just the sugar of the moment? Uh, here's another one. Totalitarianism, however, does not so much promise an age of faith as in ages of schizophrenia. A society becomes totalitarian when its structure becomes flagrantly artificial. We're in, in the digital age of like, we don't know what's AI and what, what's, uh, what's misinformation and what, what's faked. And is that a guy wearing a mask? <laughs> we have yeah. no idea. He goes on. It's flagrantly artificial. That is when its ruling class has lost its function, but succeeds in clinging by, to power by force or fraud. Such a society, no matter how long it persists, can never afford to become uh, either tolerant or intellectually stable. And that's what he means by schizophrenic of like, oh, you, so you can't, you can that's talk so about tolerance, but no one's as intolerant as the tolerance crowd. Because what they mean by tolerance is, is, oh, no, 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 tolerate those that we agree with. But if you disagree, if you say something so narrow in scope is worship Jesus alone, they're, they're going to shout you down because you had the audacity to believe something narrow and specific. Uh, no, instead, we should all be completely universally open-minded. You can't actually have any real core beliefs. As G.K. Chesterton will say, uh, tolerance is the top virtue of a person without convictions. Meaning if you don't really have any real hardcore convictions out there, the only thing that you can really cling to is don't tell anyone else they're wrong. Everyone's right. And that that's the kind of age of tolerance. And that version of tolerance is intolerant of anyone that really believes something. So Interesting will, times. Will, will the John level be Coming back from this. I don't know. It may be this video. <laughs> that they see it and they're kind of like, well, let's meet him at the airport. He's on the list. I'm like, well, it's going to be a short trip for me. <laughs> I guess my wife and kids and the, the group will go on and see I'll the sights. I'll just, I'm going to bring some good books, you know, just in case. I want to read some good books. I'm going to read 1984 in a UK prison. <laughs> well, guys, pray for our John. Pray for our John in a couple of weeks this next month. Please lift him up. <laughs> oh, I'm going to live free. I'm going to live free. Guys, thanks so much for listening. We've got a lot more in this show that you are missing. Our Q and ambush section, which is questions from you guys, stuff that you want to hear. 
Uh, that's part of this show. And also our hot topic section. You're not going to want to miss it. To get the rest of the show, you're going to have to support us. We really appreciate it if you would put skin in the game and help us with this movement. You guys get to choose the winners out there. Woke entertainment companies are guys like us, little guys. We need your support. So if you would go over to watchwpsn.com, that's watchwpsn.com, sign up. You'll get the rest of this show, The John Lovell Show, all of our other shows, and a whole bunch of training classes from me and from other trainers in the industry that we deem amazing and spectacular. It's a fantastic value. Sign up for a year. We'd appreciate it, and we will see you next time, guys.